Sitius Altius Fortius. No, it's not the phrase from the Harry Potter's book. It's the motto of the Olympic Games. Faster, higher, stronger. Hello everyone, welcome to Multilingual. Today we're talking about sports. Even if you're not a sports fan, you won't be able to avoid the topic this year. Why? Well, the Olympic Games have already started and, by the way, the topic of sports is always something that people like chatting about. So buckle up and let's learn some useful vocabulary so that you can chat along. What kind of sport do you personally like? Take your pick. Archery, cycling, equestrian sport, fencing, gymnastics, high jump, javelin, rowing, sailing, synchronized swimming, table tennis, track and field events, triathlon, weightlifting, wrestling just to name a few of them. I personally love gymnastics and synchronized swimming. I keep an eye on the medal table in these sports to see which country has won the medals. To keep an eye on something means to watch somebody or something in order to stay informed, to be up to date. And what about you? What competitions do you keep an eye on? This year, the Olympic Games are taking place in Tokyo, Japan. So let's talk a bit about the Olympics. These words go together with the word Olympic. An Olympic athlete. A sports person who takes part in the Olympic Games. The Olympic flame and the Olympic torch. The symbols of the Olympic Games. The Olympic spirit an Olympic record, an Olympic medal, gold, silver, and bronze, the Olympic village, where the athletes are accommodated, and of course, the famous Olympic rings. Did you know that the Olympic rings were publicly presented for the first time in 1913? In the center of a white background, five rings interlaced, blue, yellow, black, green, and red. According to the founder of the modern Olympic Games, the rings represent the five continents at the time. Europe, Africa, Asia, America, and Oceania. The colors of the rings together with the white of the background show the colors of every competing country's flag at the time. And now let's learn some useful words and phrases that will help you Talk not only about the Olympic Games, but also sports in general. We all used to be told that it's the taking part in sport events that really matters. On the other hand, however, it's not just about participating, but also winning and losing. So let's talk about victory and defeat. Let's start with victory. To beat someone at and by. You can beat someone at tennis 3 to 1. To beat at something, here you name the sport. To beat by something, here you mention the score or the time difference. We were beaten by 5 points. Here you show the score difference. This athlete has beaten another one by 2 seconds. To be in the lead means to be leading at the moment. The American athlete is in the lead in tennis. Do you know who is in the lead in javelin? To come first or to cross the line first means to win. If an athlete came first, they won the competition. In this case, they win gold. If you come second, you win silver. And third, you win bronze. If an athlete has shown some extraordinary skills, then they might have set, broken, or smashed the world record. So we say to set, to break, or to smash the world record. To smash sounds much more emotional, of course. 
Now let's talk about defeat. Why do some athletes not win? Maybe because they've been disqualified due to the positive doping test, for example, or they got injured, or they decided to drop out, or they simply came last. Sometimes there is not only one winner. If two teams or athletes have shown equal results, then we say that they drew or tied. Very often, a competition consists of different rounds. In this case, we say to reach the semi-final, to reach the quarter-final, and to reach the final. Finally, the team or the athlete you support has won. How can you express your emotions? You can say, I'm over the moon, meaning that you're extremely happy, or I'm elated, or I'm thrilled. On the contrary, if they've lost, you can say, I'm really disappointed. We were unlucky. We didn't deserve to lose. Very interesting here. If you speak about a team game, you also include yourself here and you say, we. By the way, here I have another helpful video on feelings and emotions. Check this one out if you want to learn more vocabulary on this topic. Do you have your favorite athlete? How can you speak about him or her? How can you describe an athlete? You can say that he or she is in top form or is a solid performer, is a cut above the rest, is at the top of his game or at the top of her game. You can describe an athlete who you hope and you think will win, although they're not expected by others to win as an underdog. If an athlete has not shown his or her best result, we can say he hasn't reached his true potential. Well, why? He probably lacks discipline or focus. She hit the wall means she has reached her highest potential and probably has to train harder for the next competition. If an athlete is not in their best form, we can say that he or she is off the pace. It's funny that native speakers of English frequently use a number of different sport idioms in their daily lives. Let's learn some of them. For example, you can hear this. I've worked in sales for ages. I know the score. If you say that, it means that you know how things in sales work. You are an expert. You know the score. Does he know that if he doesn't sell anything, he'll be for the high jump? If somebody is for the high jump, it means that this person is in big trouble. My job has been too stressful. I'm thinking of throwing in the towel. What the heck does that mean? Does someone throw the towel? No, the meaning is figurative. To throw in the towel means to give up. My job has been too stressful that I want to give it up and look for something different, so I want to throw in the towel. I was blindsided when my boss fired me this morning. To be blindsided means that you do not expect something to happen, like in football when an opposing player comes suddenly behind you and steals the ball from you. Blindsided. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching this video till the end. Let me know in the comments down below if it was helpful for you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in my next one. And of course, keep your fingers crossed for your favorite players in the Olympics. Bye guys.